Okay. This circle represents your mind. Do you see it? It's, it's, exact, it's exactly what your mind looks like. Okay. <laughs> your mind is a giant empty space. A oh, circle. Okay. All right. But actually filling your mind is just all kinds of thoughts. And thoughts that come from all over the place, from all different so sources, good and bad, uh, scary and comforting, just all kinds of thoughts. All right. So this entire bubble right this entire thing of your mind is filled with all kinds of thoughts just constantly passing and popping and shooting every which way all the time okay and I, yeah and I, I, I so mark gives me the thumbs up on on the drawing okay so you can see it you can read it says thoughts in a giant bubble okay all right so this is what's going on in our conscious mind the unconscious mind is maybe a little bit harder but i just intend to be talking about our conscious thoughts that we can actually um in a way see and notice in our own minds all right some of those thoughts we're going to call beliefs so notice not all beliefs are thoughts some thoughts you have you don't believe but all beliefs are some form of thought at least that's what i'm going to claim Okay. And then philosophers love, 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 or at least until up until recently, and people until people got really pessimistic about it, I guess. Um, there's this other little subset of belief. That one might be a little bit harder to read. Okay. But that says knowledge. And according to my philosophical training, knowledge is a tiny subset of our beliefs. Okay. It's not all of our beliefs count as knowledge, but some of them do. All right. So what's, what's the difference between these two things? What's the really key difference between thoughts and beliefs? I'm probably going to lay aside knowledge for the most part tonight. Even though it's a super cool, interesting concept to talk about, I think I'm just going to mostly fo focus on beliefs and thoughts tonight. Okay, so what's the difference between beliefs and thoughts? Well, a belief is a thought that you trust, that you accept, that you take on board and have a certain amount of confidence in, okay? You cherish it in a way, right? You bring it onto your team, and I think I'm gonna use this analogy a little bit uh, later on some more, is that thoughts are on your team that are on your team are your beliefs. Okay, now, I'm going to do something with this drawing that's going to disrupt it. And we're going to introduce the idea of truth. Okay. So truth is going to split this down the middle. I thought it was pretty nifty on my part though. Look, I, knowledge is only on one side. Okay. All right. Okay. <laughs> we'll see if that gets captured by the... But basically, on the left side of my drawing are all things that are true. On the right side of my drawing are all things that are false. So some of the things that we think, so I was trying to come up with an example, and the first thing that popped into my head, just like many of our thoughts just kind of pop out in our head, and we don't really know where they come from. Um, the first thing that popped into my head, an example of a false belief, is that the, the 49ers won the Super Bowl last year. Okay, um, False. <laughs> they didn't. I actually had to look it up to verify, okay? But this is, this is the kind of, I'm, I'm, I'm headed in the direction of, of this concept of truth and defining the concept of truth for you, okay? I have plenty of thoughts, right, uh, that are true, and I have plenty of thoughts that are false. Likewise, I have plenty of beliefs that are true and plenty of beliefs that are false. I would like for this section here to just kind of go away, like, I kind of want to fill it in. Like, no, no, there are none of those. Right? I don't have any of those. Okay? What we would like is for all of our beliefs to be on the true side and none of them to be on the false side. That would be ideal. But the truth of the matter is that our minds are not. If, you're, if your mind is anything like me and you're not, you know, really super powered <laughs> in your mental ability, in your cognitive function, and maybe your sources of belief, um, then you've probably got beliefs that are false. And it's actually quite difficult sometimes because remember the beliefs are your thoughts that are on your team. 
Okay, They're on your side. You've accepted them. You've trusted them. It's really difficult, and this is what critical thinking is, to sort through which of your beliefs are true and which are false. And what we would really like in the process of critical thinking is to kind of do that filtering process even before our thoughts become beliefs. We'd like to be able to filter out our our false thoughts and keep them from coming into the circle of belief in the first place. That would be great. Okay, That's what we would really like to do. But I want to spend a little bit of more time on talking about truth. Because while belief is a little more up to us under our conscious control as human beings, it's not completely under our conscious control. In fact, we can kind of go on autopilot and many of us do especially until we're at a certain age of adulthood and maturity. We just kind of accept things that come into our minds and we get a bunch of things that are beliefs to us um, in a very unreflective fashion that we're not really taking a whole lot of control and responsibility over. But truth is not like that. Truth is not something that we have conscious control over. 